In the United States, a secret memo detailed a year-long Drug Enforcement Administration operation that sent undercover operatives into Venezuela to record and build drug trafficking cases against the country's leaders, including President Nicolás Maduro. In Palestine, the Ministry of Health warned that the number of miscarriages increased by 300 percent due to the launching of chemical weapons by Israel. And in Belgium, farmers blocked the seat of the European Parliament with tractors in protest against the fall of income in the sector and the regulations imposed by the community bloc. Hello and welcome to From the South. I'm Alejandra Garcia from Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. A U.S. news outlet revealed on Thursday that the Drug Enforcement Administration, or DIA, infiltrated agents in the Venezuela soil to secretly record and build false drug trafficking cases against the country's leaders. According to AP News Agency, they obtained a 15-page memo from 2018 on an operation which targeted a dozen officials, including Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro. The document clearly stated that it was necessary to carry out this operation unilaterally and without notifying the Venezuelan authorities. The revelation threatens to shake already strained relations with the Venezuelan government and could deepen resentment throughout the Latin America toward Washington for its history of meddling in the internal affairs of countries in the region. In recent days, the president of Venezuela has accused the DIA in and the CIA of undertaking efforts to destabilize Venezuela, an accusation the CIA declined to comment on. In Haiti, the escalation of armed violence and by criminal gangs has caused the displacement of thousands of people in the community of Petion Ville in the country's capital. In recent days, the residents of the area had been repeatedly attacked by members of the Vel Tohom paramilitary group, which is seeking to take control of the area. According to an assessment drafted by the International Organization for Migration in December 2023, there were more than 310,000 internally displaced in Haiti. 94% of these people in the country come from the Western Department, being the capital the most affected place. The escalation in armed violence in Haiti has triggered a deepened humanitarian crisis. Yesterday, the criminal group arrived and started shooting everywhere. There were people dead. So this morning we went out and took shelter here. We have no water, no food, no clothes. We have nothing. I call on the Haitian state to come and help us. We really need help. In Argentina, the Chamber of Deputies resumed on Thursday the debate on the bill promoted by the government, better known as Omnibus Law, given its extension. The debate was resumed after an overnight intermission that followed an intense legislative day on Wednesday, marked by the opposition's accusations that they still did not have the official draft of the bill on which they were supposed to vote. Outside the Congress, after hours of protests without incidents in rejection of the omnibus bill, the police advanced against demonstrators and generated moments of tension. I am here to defend my country because these people are thinking of sacking it. They are thinking of selling it in little pieces, a little bit of Patagonia, a little bit of the Maldivas Island, a little bit of the Glacier Zone, a little bit of the Lithium Zone, and so on. In this context, the social leader Juan Garboas condemned the neoliberal project promoted by the executive of Javier Milei and affirmed that the excessive security operation aimed to install fear in the citizenship. We came here to show our solidarity with those men and women who do not think the same way as we do. But we came here to demonstrate and to repudiate the plan of hunger and misery planned by Javier Milei, Villarreal, Burrich, Caputo, Sturzenegger, which we hope does not count on the complicity of the governors and the deputies and senators who entered the chamber to the parliament. In this context, the human rights organizations denounced that forces of law and order violently arrested four women while they were demonstrating outside the Congress against the so-called omnibus bill. 
In this regard, the denouncement states that after the session went into recess until Thursday, self-convened demonstrators continued to arrive in the area of the legislative building. In this way, among the demonstrators, a group of women who sat in the street and sang the anthem quickly were surrounded by members of the federal police who violently picked them up and grabbed them to a police vehicle. On the other hand, social movements also reported that during the day forces of public order also repressed with batons and pepper spray citizens who were demonstrating peacefully. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English where you will find news in different formats, news updates and more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back. In Palestine on Thursday, the Ministry of Health warned that the number of miscarriages increased by 3,300% due to the launching of chemical weapons by Israel. In this way, the medical staff warned about irregularities in the general public health situation and during the gestation process that may have their origin in chemical affectations caused by the use of weapons used by the armed forces of the Israeli occupation. In this regard, authorities denounced that since October 7th, the Tel Aviv regime used weapons prohibited by international law, such as white phosphorus bombs, smoke bombs, lightning bombs, and other rockets and missiles launched. In addition, the Ministry of Health pointed out that as a result of the intense, insistent bombardments perpetrated by the Zionist entity, pregnant women are also exposed to many hours of walking in order to be able to move to safer places. A doctor explains the causes of the massive increase in the number of miscarriages, explaining that it is due to chemical weapons used by Israel in the attack on the Gaza Strip. Let's hear his statements. In fact, we are still living an unprecedented sanitary and humanitarian catastrophe we have never lived, a catastrophe of this magnitude in our lifetime. What is happening is a strong proof that they are using against us chemical weapons that affect the general situation of public health and pregnant women, which unfortunately increases the percentage of miscarriage which has reached 300% of what it was before. We deal with miscarriage cases all the time and throughout the day coming from the displacement sites that are hosting a large number of Palestinians who were inhabitants of the governorates of the Gaza Strip, either from the north or from the south, who moved to schools and hospitals as centers of refugee during daylight hours. We received miscarriage cases and transferred them to other hospital centers, such as the Emirati Hospital, for follow-up. This is an irrefutable proof that they are using chemical materials to carry out their attacks that we are not aware of, and therefore negatively affect public health in general, and especially pregnant women, causing increase of these cases of miscarriage, and we doctors have no choice. We began to treat many cases of pregnancy and we consider that the pregnancies are evolving well and in a normal state, but suddenly we are faced with the need to perform a medical process on the woman and to a daughter scraping because of the spontaneous miscarriage. This miscarriage indicates that they are caused by chemical materials that we don't know now. It is nature and therefore we cannot treat these cases. We are facing an urgent need to cease the aggression to stop attacking civilians, to stop attacking women, mothers and pregnant women who are permanent targets with chemical and non-chemical material, which is why the hospital today is collapsed with so many cases that require transfer to another hospital, which in turn has no available capacity to receive more cases of miscarriage that it already has the cases of miscarriage have increased in an alarming way since they need special treatment of medical follow-up and cleanings as well as treatment to avoid hemorrhage. This situation deserves an urgent intervention of the United Nations and the World Health Organization and other organizations to stop this kind of aggression and stop attacking civilians and therefore lower the intensity of this crushing humanitarian crisis. In this context, Shirin Khalil Ata Abu Dajer tells us her story of how she suffered her miscarriage and at the treatment she received. Let's listen.
معك مواطن شيرين خليل I am Shirin Khalil Ata Abu Dangar. I am from Jabalia camp in Gaza. We were displaced from the north to the south because we were ordered to evacuate to Rafa, which is safer. I have a hip prosthesis. During this displacement, they just stopped me in the street and detained me for about half an hour in the rain. When they called me, I went through a dead road, which caused an hemorrhage that continued all the way to my family's house. From there, I was transferred to the Emirati hospital where I had a miscarriage. Thanks God for everything. We came from the north walking, we stayed for a while under the rains, and as I told you, I went up a dead road. They shouted on me and my daughter, and I fell from the top of the hill. And suddenly, I felt that something came off me, and I saw the blood run over my legs. We were walking from where the tents were to the gates at the entrance of Nusairat until I met my relatives. There, my brother put me in his car and took me directly to the school. And at the school, there was an ambulance that took me to the Emirati hospital. There, I had a miscarriage. For a moment, I thought that they had shot me with a silent weapon because of the hemorrhage I had, with a gun or something like that. I saw an arm and I still was very afraid and I prayed to God thinking that I was dying. I let go of my daughter's hand and all days I did not know what to do. I was afraid to make noise so they wouldn't notice me. Then, they ordered me to stand up, but when they saw me like that, they were afraid too. So they started talking in Hebrew and among themselves which I didn't understand. When they released me, I felt that I came back to life. And when I met the children again and Hauptmann, they all thought that I was wounded. I also thought that I had been injured by some shot. At first, I didn't notice my miscarriage. Hamas leaders are in Egypt to negotiate a truce proposal from Qatar, Egypt and the United States. In this context, the Palestinians are pressing Hamas to demand a ceasefire and to allow them to return to their homes in Gaza. Our Telesur correspondent Nur Harassan with the details. Hamas leaders are in Egypt to negotiate the latest truce plan proposed by Qatar, Egypt and the United States after they had long talks in uh, France. Palestinians now on the ground are graving for a truce agreement. They are actually even putting pressure on Hamas to accept a ceasefire only if they will be granted their rights, like the right of returning back to their homes in northern Gaza and in central uh, Gaza City. Especially now we are talking about a big number of displaced people, more than 1.5 million people. At the same time, Palestinians are looking to what is happening regarding the uh, cutting the funds from the uh, UN. They do believe if this war took more time and in the light of the cutting of the funds on the UNRWA, the situation in Gaza will be deteriorating and Gaza will uh, witness uh, something that was not witnessed before. It's worse the human care, humanitarian crisis where people will be uh, killed and will die because of the lack of food, water, cold. There is no medicine, so even though we are reporting these cases while now the UN, the UNRWA is fully operating, what could happen if the funds cut on the UNRWA? At the same time, we met with Adnan Abu Hasna, who is the UN spokesperson in Gaza, and let us hear what he had to say for us. While many Western powers have frozen funding to the United Nations Agency for Refugees in Palestine, UNRWA, the Israeli government has not yet provided the United Nations with the information of the accusations involving 12 members of the agency in the attacks of last October 7th. During a press conference, the Secretary General's spokesman, Stefan Dujarek, declared that the United Nations has requested written and truthful information on the evidence incriminating 12 agents, but that this has not been received. In a preventive act, the agency has dismissed nine of those allegedly involved, one is deceased and the other two are awaiting confirmation on, of their identity. Likewise, the Internal Affairs Department has opened an investigation which is expected to yield results in the next two to three weeks. 
We have a second short break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English-speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on screen to join directly and share the link to reach more people. Constant news, coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and informed with Telesur. Find a short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. In Belgium, farmers blocked with tractors the seat of the European Parliament in protest against the fall of income in the sector and the regulations imposed by the community bloc. Farmers lit bonfires and parked their tractors in front of the site of the two protests as an extraordinary summit of the European Council took place. The main topic of the meeting of the European Union bloc leaders is a deal on a financial aid package for Ukraine and no discussion of the problems of European farmers in plan. For their part, the farmers are demanding a change in the pan-European agricultural policy, the lifting of numerous restrictions, including environmental ones, and an end to the uncontrolled import of cheap foreign products. Meanwhile, in France, the agricultural sector continues protest for the second week in a row. On Wednesday night, a group of farmers blocked the A6 highway near Paris, demanding better conditions for the sector. During the day, police arrested 91 protesters after they tried to break into the Rungis food market, the largest in Europe, located near the French capital. In addition to moving on Paris, convoys were also attempting to encycle Lyon, France's third biggest city. Farmers' complaints range from rising costs to meeting carbon-cutting targets, fuel prices, inflation, bureaucracy and Ukrainian grain support. Let's go to Spain, where farmers on Thursday gathered in a local protest in the northern city of León. In this way, the farmers drove their tractors on main streets and avenues to demand fair conditions for the agricultural sector. The organizers of the mobilization indicated that their sector rejects rent prices, rising electricity and fuel costs, as well as current bureaucracy and environmental policies which they say undermine their ability to compete with other countries. It is worth noting that the main farmers associations will meet with the Minister of Agriculture on February 2nd as they prepare more protests across the country in the coming weeks. In the meantime, the leaders of the 27 European Union countries sealed a deal on Thursday to provide Ukraine with a new 54 billion euros aid package for its war-ravaged economy after Hungary backed down from its threats to veto the move. European Council President Charles Michael announced the agreement that was reached in the first hour of a summit that he was sharing in Brussels. Michael stated at news conference that this decision conveys both a message for Ukrainians and it shows our determination to be absolutely mobilized in support to their freedom to support their future. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky welcomed it as a very important decision. Ukraine could receive the first tranche of funds in March once the European Parliament has approved the agreement. On Thursday, security personnel at Germany's major air terminals were called by the Verdi Union to stage a one-day one strike to increase pressure on employers to implement wage improvements. The employees called to strike are in, a are in charge of passenger baggage and personal screening, and without them it, it is not possible to maintain the operation of airport security areas. The situation has forced the, air the airports in the cities of Brandenburg. Berlin, Hamburg and Frankfurt to cancel flights until 10 p.m. On, on February 1st. The airline Lufthansa advised passengers with booked flights to stay away from the airports as there will be no domestic or international flights until least at least 3 a.m. in the morning on February 2nd. The responsible secretary of the union, Osai Tarim, declared that there is a high participation of the airline workers and described the strike as a successful start. Employers should also think about their employees and pay them adequately. I have been a pensioner for some time and have had the same experience. Employers don't like to pay money, so you have to do it from time to time. 
On Thursday began a massive strike movement in Finland, which, according to local authorities, paralyzed most of the air traffic and closed workplaces in protest against labor reforms proposed by the government, which include cuts in social benefits. According to the organizers, some 300,000 people are expected to participate in the two-day strike. In this sense, the national airline Finnair announced the cancellation of 550 flights, affecting around 60,000 passengers. On the other hand, several unions also warned that trains across the country, subways, buses and streetcars in the capital will be paralyzed on Friday, while joining the call for strikes in the energy sector, schools and health services. In turn, Prime Minister Petteri Orpo has argued that the country needs an export-oriented labor market model to boost competitiveness. However, unions have vowed to paralyze the country to force the government to back down. In the United Kingdom, police are on lookout for the suspect who perpetrated an attack with a corrosive substance in London where nine people were injured. The attack was directed at a woman and her minor children whose calls for help alerted three adults and three police officers who, in an attempt to rescue the family, were also injured. City paramedics immediately attended the scene to transport the victims to hospitals, as well as firefighters and British police officers who were working to determine the type of substance that was used against the individuals. Detective Alexander Castle indicated that the injuries to the police officers are not believed to be serious. However, no information was released at this time about the health status of the other injured. In Greece, university students clashed with police Thursday during a demonstration against plans by the Conservative government to allow private universities to operate in the country. Several thousand university students and supporters marched through central Athens before clashing with police near Parliament. Police used tear gas against protesters. The center-right government of Prime Minister Kliakos Mitsotakis is pushing to pass several key laws early in the, this new year, building on his landslide re-election victory in 2023 and his current huge lead in opinion polls. The government arguments that the measure will prevent thousands of Greek students from studying abroad each year. In recent weeks, the Greek administration has faced a series of protests from various professional groups triggered by legislative reforms forms and the cost of living crisis. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many other stories on our website at telecityenglish.net and join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok as well. For Telecity English, I'm Alejandra Garcia. Thank you for watching.